I know sometimes it seems redundant. We just prayed, and the first thing I say to you is, let's pray again. But I don't think you can pray too much. So, would you indulge me in one more moment in prayer? God of grace and love, we come before you having sung your praises and read from your holy word. Now, O oh God, be with us, guide us, help us, and protect us as we seek to interpret your word. Fill us with your spirit, guide us in your truth, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together <coughs> might be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know what? There's the title. Joy, I'm going to make you work extra. Don't run off. Just go back or up one on the arrows. Perfect. Just, now you can go sit down if you choose for a little while. <laughs> well, just leave the scripture up today. You know, when it's a long one, I make you open your Bibles. But today you can see it all on one screen. So we're just going to leave it there. And um, today I wanted, I was focused on that last phrase from David. So I shall be saved from my enemies. Now, many of you know my background and know I grew up in Texas, the buckle of the Southern Baptist Bible Belt, and I spent a huge amount of my teen years being asked the question, are you saved? I was a disciple kid. That was not language we used very often. I can't tell you a time, for instance, because this is when I was paying attention, that I sat in church camp and heard a keynoter talk to me about the importance of being saved. I guarantee my Southern Baptist friends heard it at camp. They also had to swim at separate times between the boys and the girls because you can't see each other in your swim clothes. We got to swim together. <laughs> Because <laughs> we were progressive and cool like that. And I think I've told some of you the story before, but it bears repeating. I know this is going to come as a shock to you, those that know me well, but I was a little snarky as a teenager. I, I, I know I outgrew that, and you find that stunning, and you can't imagine it at all. But the question that kept coming up of the whole are you saved thing, I finally decided the smart answer was yes. <coughs> you know, that, that saved me from the next conversation. Are you saved? <coughs> yes. But there's a follow-up question. Did you know there was a follow-up question? <coughs> Apparently, it's not enough to be saved. You've got to know when, and look at Martha, when were you saved? Well, that was a harder question for me. Growing up in the church, when were you saved? Well, always? I don't, you know, what they were looking for, I learned much later, was when did you confess your faith in Jesus Christ? Now, if I had just known that, if somebody had explained that code language to me, I'd have been fine because I would have had an answer. But being the somewhat stunningly snarky kid that I am, I worked hard on that alliteration. You want me to do it again? Um, uh, being the somewhat stunningly snarky kid that I was at the time, I said, um, it was about 2,000 years ago. I just found out about it recently. Are you saved is language we use in the church that if we're not careful in this context, we could misinterpret it. Now, this is a psalm of David, which means it happened how many years before the coming of Jesus Christ? I think it was about 500. Yes! You said that just as I did that, didn't you, Dan? Gold star for you. It was about 500 years before. So to say that I shall be saved from my enemies or the enemy is unfair to what David's really saying. Let's not over-interpret this. What David is saying is, I'll be saved from people who want to kill me. Not sin, not salvation as we talk about it in this day and age. He is simply saying, 
I'm going to live. Now, I asked um, uh, Joy to, to go back to the scripture because I wanted to look a lot, excuse me, at verse 2. Because there's a lot in there. And we're going to actually go from bottom to top today. Um, so, my stronghold. Who is David describing? This one's an easy one. Jump on it while you can. God! God is my stronghold. And in this day and age, if there's anything we all need, it is a stronghold. Something that we can hold fast to in the storms and the challenges and the difficulties of life. A stronghold is something that keeps you secure when the wind is blowing and the seas are rocking and I think I'm going over the edge. Now, I know none of you are experiencing that this week, but maybe sometime in your life you experienced those rocking seas, those difficulties, and you needed that stronghold. And David is reminding us that God is our stronghold. Now, the one just before that, the horn of my salvation. This is a quiz for Wednesday night attenders, no pressure. What does that mean? Is that, is that a trumpet? What, what is the horn of my salvation? You've heard this in the last two years. This is, this is quiz time. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Thanks for remembering that. <laughs> We're in Greater Chicago. You ought to know that one. The horn of my salvation. This, this refers back to um, the altar and really the formation of the temple. And the altar and the temple had these horns on it. That, that stuck up and out. And if you were holding the horn of the altar, it was believed that God would protect you from all enemies and death. To the point that when David later, so after this was written, was deciding who would succeed, succeed him as king, and he kept his promise to Bathsheba that her son Solomon would be king, there was an older heir to the throne. After Absalom, there was... Nobody knows this one. Then. So it may be Mark. <coughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah. Double gold stars for Daphne. Have a dead John or something very close to that, was actually the oldest living heir or, or son of David. And when David got very ill, he just assumed the kingship. He basically said, I'm king now because David's sick. And he starts setting his people in place. He throws the party. He's, he, he's doing the thing. And David declares that Solomon will be king. And there's division in the holy realm of, of blessing for, for the king. And, um, and, and the prophet Nathan anoints Solomon. And, and this is significant. Solomon doesn't fall dead. Because the strong belief was that once the high priest anoints the person, if they are not in fact God's choice, they die. Right. <laughs> And immediately when word gets out, Solomon's older half-brother, Abedinejab, um, runs to the altar and grabs hold of the horn and waits to speak to Solomon because he <laughs> knows he is going to be killed for his um, usurping of the throne. And Solomon comes to him and he says, I will and, and, and he says, I will not let go until you promise that I will live. And Solomon says, as long as you are able to be a worthy human, you will live. He lets go of the horn of the altar. And that's the last we hear of him. So we assume he becomes a worthy person and in fact lives. So the horn of salvation in this era is that, again, that holding point, that point of trust, that point that says, I am protected by God. And look at the rest of them. My rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield. 
I think David was praising God because he felt protected and cared for. He felt safe. When I was a child, we played tag. Did you ever, anybody ever play tag? Mm -hmm. Do they still play tag? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Do they have bases? Yeah. Sometimes, no? Yeah, I, I, my kids are useless in, in this conversation. So I, I figured, well, I'll just jot down on my notepad that uh, waiting to ask. We had bases. That was always, and, and I always found that troublesome. And I'm like, you know, you're either risking yourself out there or you're not. This sitting on base is silliness. But, but you know, for us, it was almost always a tree, right? The base was always a tree. And the debate would become, well, what part of the tree? <laughs> right? Because there's always somebody that would grab a leaf. And stretch it to, uh, and then, oh, do we have this? Do we have electricity still? Is that a thing? Yeah, did anybody play tag with electricity? That's an important part, I should point out. So where I come from, you, you could help people be safe with electricity. So you hold on to the tree, and you reach out your hand, and then your friend can grab your hand, and you can make this chain that reaches out to Because the goal was to make it, it eternally by making it impossible for that person to touch anyone that wasn't safe. Now, why we weren't smart enough to solve the whole the tree and be done with it is beyond me. But the, the idea that there was a foundation where we could be safe, where we were protected, that was our refuge, that is what David is praising. And he's praising God at a time when things were pretty ugly. For those who have read the story, Saul was really, really, really threatened by David and was out to kill him. This was not birth order succession we're talking about here. In fact, if it were, David's best friend would have been king, but he wanted no part of it. Things were ugly. And David is praising God when he is fully saved. When I started talking with you this morning, we talked about uh, not just the difference in salvation in our current language to what language we're dealing with here, but then the idea that uh, God carries us through difficult times. God is our stronghold is the first thing we talked about. And today, God is still our stronghold. God, the master of the universe, the most powerful being that ever was or is or is to come, is your help. And I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so I shall be saved. Somebody here is going to experience a difficulty this week. You know you're going to do it. You're going to say, oh, I think even God's against me. I don't know which one of them. Somebody's going to do it. Remember this psalm. Remember that God is our fortress, our rock, our deliverer, our horn of salvation. The one that if we hold on to, we are saved. God has promised you will be saved from your enemies. Just like David. And just like throughout history where God over and over again redeemed God's people. Trust that. Live boldly because of that. And make the sharing of Jesus Christ a reality because you know you will be saved. May God make it so.